Hello, everyone. Um, I'm extremely happy and extremely honored to be in a panel with such distinguished scholars. And thank you, Madalina and Professor Paul Golding for organizing this um, symposium. Um, today, um, I'm going to present on a topic called Beyond Buddhism. How did the Tangots learn about Confucianism? In the middle period in Chinese history uh, was an era of tremendous change and innovation. On the ruins of the glorious Tang Empire, new powers rose and fell, accepting, accumulating, and producing new ideas and cultural heritage. The creation of indigenous scripts by Kitans, Tanguts, and Churchans, as well as translation of secular and Buddhist texts by non Sinaitic regimes still remains one of the main research questions of the field of East Asian studies. Among those three peoples, the Tanguts were the most fruitful. They created and propagated a complex scriptural system and translated a large part of the Buddhist canon and a number of Confucian and Taoist texts. Why did they do this? What triggered their interest in the manifestation of this cultural uniqueness? Why were the Tanguts interested in Confucianism? Although these questions have been previously addressed, I seek to further explore them by looking at important uh, importation of secular or and Confucian texts in Western Xia, as well as its position in Tangut society. A scholar who would like to approach the history of the Tangut state of Xia, 1038 to 1227, inevitably faces two obvious challenges lack of historical sources and the difficulty of the Tangut script. Despite its neighbors, Kitan Liao, uh, Northern and Southern Song, and uh, Georgian Xin, of which standard histories were compiled during the Yuan dynasty, Tangut Xia doesn't possess its own official chronicle. Nevertheless, in Western scholarship, one may notice that Xia is constantly described as a conquest dynasty flanked by Liao and Xin. A scholar of a middle period of China Hoklam Chan suggests that Xia was never considered as a legitimate, legitimate state that Shuda could be incorporated into the traditional dynastic succession pattern. Tangut were not Sinicized as the Kitans and Georgians. And finally, uh, Xi Xia never found uh, a patron among the scholar officials in Mongol service, whether Chinese or non Chinese, to speak for the need of compiling its history. End of quote. To the best of my knowledge, we do not know whether the Tanguts uh, conducted court records required for the compilation of standard histories, similar to the Chinese or Kitans. Most likely, the Tanguts did it in a different manner, but no records have been preserved or have been discovered. Although the issue of Sinicization uh, is relatively complicated, I doubt that Sun had less influence on Xia than it had of Liao or Xin. Despite the absence of an official chronicle, Historians still may find records about Tangut Xia in Sunnitic historical sources, such as official histories and historiographical compilations. According to the history of Song, a Tangut leader, Li Yuan Hao, proclaimed the establishment of Western Xia in 1038. The following year is highlighted by the appointment of Ye Li Renzhong as a head of newly established Fan Xue office which uh, was in charge of translation of secular texts, such as Xiao Jin, Er Ya, Si Yan Zha Zi. The combination of these three texts is very peculiar and requires some further elaboration. Considering these texts in a context of Northern Song intellectual atmosphere, we may immediately think about the educational character of them. Si Yan Zha Zi is mentioned in a number of Chinese historical sources and can be identified as Meng Shu, a Russian Tangut specialist, Kirill Salonin, uh, indicates that the majority of excavated Confucian related Tangut sources belong to this genre. The, the selection of Arya, a most ancient Chinese dictionary, may indicate its authoritative position among Song philologists. Since Yeli Renrong, or most likely his team, had to work on the creation of the Tangut script, most likely Arya was an essential tool for this challenge. Translation of Xiao Jin, a Confucian text, apparently aimed to propagate Confucian ideology among the subjects of Western Xia. After 200 years in the 13th century, Xiao Jin and Arya would be among the texts which constituted the 13 classics. 
Apparently, the selection of these three texts by the Tanguts were not random. As indicated in uh, the Song history, the Tanguts requested the texts that were uh, definite, definite and applicable. A rich textual, a rich Tango textual deposit excavated by a Russian explorer, Pyotr Kozlov in 1908, 1909 in the ruins of an abandoned Tango city of Harakoto indicates that the Tangoots also translated on other Confucian scriptures, such as the Analects and uh, Muncius, military treatises, such as Sun Tzu Bin Fa and Liu Tao, uh, Huang Shi Gong San Liu, uh, government treatises, such as Chen Guan Cheng Yao, historiographical compositions, such as Sha Guo, and um, some uh, uh, primers, such as um, Tian um, Wen and others. It was pointing out that some texts preserved in Karakoto uh, became extinct in the Sinitic world. The diversity of the remaining secular texts clearly presents a broad panorama of Tangut ideological agenda. Firstly, uh, Tanguts were interested in Confucian classics. As we can see, we found some pieces of um, excerpts from uh, Lun Yu and from Mencius, which became an essential foundation for Confucian-based state ideology, at least in the 11th century. A number of texts uh, which were devoted uh, to the art of statecraft and history, such as uh, Zheng Guan Cheng Yao and Sha Guo, uh, might have been used as practical manuals for governance and for historical analogism, a me method that was highly praised by the Song statement Sima Guang. The presence of various dictionaries, lexicons, and rhyme books suggest that Tangus developed a robust philological tradition. Tangus were not the only non Sunnitic regime in the Middle period who translated Chinese secular texts. According to the Liao Shi, in the year 1046, the emperor again ordered the translation of books, Xiao uh, Han Jianu desiring the emperor to know about success and failures in the past and present, translated the Tongli, uh, Zheng Guan Zheng Yao, and Wu Dai Shi, end of quote. This example clearly indicates that the Kitans, similar to the Tanguts, were interested in the Chinese histories and political treatises. As we see from the received texts, the Tanguts selected the scriptures that could aid them in construction of a new social institutes and in organization of effective government. One may say that since the Tanguts imported Chinese secular literature, they thus became sinicized. Nevertheless, as Peter Ball points out, adaptation of institutions and value structures does not necessarily mean that the Tanguts uh, became sinicized. I think that we may treat this knowledge important from Sung China as a valuable tool which should have benefited the management of a new country. Moreover, received Chinese sources advocate the idea that Chinese intellectuals felt uh, anxious about the drain of their knowledge to barbarians. The epitaph uh, of the Northern Sung official, um, Wang Shangkung, uh, regarding the Tang request of Buddhist scriptures in 1055 uh, contains the following line, quote, after the Duke was appointed to accompany an envoy of the state of Xia, the Tang envoy uh, requested a purchase of histories, biographies, and Buddhist canons. The Duke, thinking that since histories contain affairs that happened between Eastern Jin and Northern Wei that should not um, be shown to barbarians, so the Tang would inwe return to the state of Xia only with Buddhist books. The first hand account illustrates how reluctant and anxious uh, Chinese officials were about letting uh, important texts fall into the hands of the Tanguts. Such an attitude fits in the overall intellectual atmosphere of the 11th century. Uh, Chinese uh, bureaucratic and intellectual elites who were concerned about uh, segregation of Chinese and non-Chinese uh, civilization achievements. Buddhism, being a foreign religious system of thought, was allowed to be exported back to the barbarians. Uh, but Chinese historical sources indicate that throughout the um, uh, 11th century, the Chinese Buddhist canon was sent to Xia for six times. Alternatively, Chinese officials uh, concentrated 
on the preservation of the Chinese knowledge not allowing to go outside. Received and excavated sources both indicate that the Tanguts experienced strong influence of Confucian or Chinese and Buddhist ideologies. A Russian Tangutologist Yevgeny Kuchanov suggests that after Li Yuanhao established a new Xia state, he faced a dilemma of choosing the state ideology, either to follow the Tibetan example and to propagate Buddhism on the state level, or to model Xia after Confucian-based Northern Song. Rutanel criticizes Kuchanov's, quote, deterministic and somewhat anachronistic, end of quote, approach, which means if A, then not B. Nevertheless, Kachanov explains that the Tanguts were rather searching for their Tangut way than just picking one or another option. In addition to th this, based on the translation of Tangut Oats excavated from Harako Tom, Nikolai Nevsky concludes that the Tanguts clearly distinguish the strong points of rulership approached by Tibetans and Chinese and revered their own book and own etiquette. I think that despite the possible antagonistic nature of Confucianism and Buddhism, these two ideologies may have different applications fortifying and legitimizing the central power. I suppose that Chinese Confucian texts and histories may have arrived in Tanguxia not directly from Song, but through the hands of Kitans and Georgians. Previously, I showed that Chinese histories were circulating in Kitan Liao. Moreover, archeological evidences from Harahuto also indicate connections uh, between the areas under Georgian rule and Tangut Xia. The destruction of Northern Song capital Kaifeng by the Georgians in 1127, known as uh, Tiankang Shu Jian, was an important event in Tangut history. The territor territorial expansion of Georgian Jin cut off Southern Song from Tangut Xia and led to mitigation of Song Xia cultural and political interactions and influences and boosted cultural and religious exchanges between Xia and Tibet. In the 12th century, we may observe a shift of Tangut religious and political life towards Tibet religious models. Nevertheless, since Jin occupied Northern China, there is a possibility that some Chinese non-Buddhist texts were circulating through at Jinxia border. Two prominent woodblocks excavated from Harakoto contain uh, a name of the printing house uh, in Pingyang, which is in present day Linfen city and in uh, Shanxi province. Um, so the, the, the small uh, inscription, which I highlighted in red, which read Pingyang Jijia Diao Yin, so printing by the family of Pingyang, and Pingyang was uh, under Georgian rule. So um, this may prove that um, the, those uh, woodblocks were important to Western Xia from the territory of Jin. The provided examples of Confucian texts that were translated into the Tangut language indicate that the Tanguts possessed practical interest in the ideology of Confucianism and historical analogism, seeking for an effective way of governments over a new country. Alternatively, as Chinese epitaph demonstrates, the Chinese felt highly suspicious of Tangut's interest in Confucianism. Thank you.